morning. Welcome to 49ers in 5, your daily update on everything happening with the team that you need to know. I'm Rob Stats Guerrero. Today is Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. Here's what's happening with your San Francisco 49ers. The Niners were a big topic in Albert Breer's Monday morning quarterback column yesterday, and I'm just going to read some of what Albert wrote. Quote, The 49ers brass thinks Purdy is capable of giving them the highest level of quarterback play they've had since Kyle Shanahan arrived in 2017. The Niners are working with a six to eight month return to play timetable on Brock Purdy, with the idea being that the timetable should be more concrete two to three months post-op. That means by the summer break, San Francisco should know if it's getting Purdy back for opening day at some point mid-season or somewhere in between. What the Niners know for certain now is that the on-field reps through spring will go to Lance and Darnold. They're hoping Lance will turn a corner, but with the roster they have and the presence of Purdy, they can no longer sacrifice in-season reps to facilitate his development as they'd planned last year. Now, obviously, that's not exactly groundbreaking stuff, but I think the point that Breer makes is a good one, and that is the fact that the Niners told everybody that Brock Purdy is the leader in the clubhouse without knowing his medical situation just goes to show exactly how much they love him inside those walls. So it's going to take a Herculean effort from Trey Lance or Sam Darnold to unseat Brock Purdy whenever it is that he gets back from injury. And this is something that Vish Kumaran and I talked about on the Under Review podcast yesterday. Purdy must have impressed the Niners off the field as much as he did on the field, because you can't go out and say that about a guy unless you are invested in both sides of that person, the on field and the off field. So Purdy must really have blown the Niners away on both sides of the job, which is good for 49er fans. I know that, you know, everybody has kind of picked their guy already, Purdy, Lance, whatever, but this isn't bad news for the 49ers. And in that vein, a lot of Brock Purdy people were celebrating as a chart came out on Twitter yesterday uh, from Summer Sports at S-U-M-E-R Sports. And it was EPA per play of quarterbacks in their rookie year. Number one on the list was Dak Prescott in 2016, who had an EPA per play of 0.24. Number two on that list was Brock Purdy last year. His EPA per play was 0.23. Now, big difference being that Dak Prescott has a sample size of 600 plays, whereas Brock Purdy has a sample size of 281 plays. But a lot of people point to this chart as evidence of Brock Purdy's future greatness. Now, look, I'm going to openly admit I've been kind of not as quick to buy into some of the advanced stats in football as I have in baseball. EPA in particular is one that I don't always think is, you know, the end all be all because I look at some other names on this list. For example, number seven on the list is Baker Mayfield in 2018. And of course, he was struggling to find a job this offseason. He's now going to be on his third team since he's come into the league. Number nine on this list is Carson Wentz. Obviously, he's well traveled around the league at this point, and he's, you know, just fighting to stay alive as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Gardner Minshew is number 14. Daniel Jones is number 15. So let's just take a deep breath and realize here that there's still a lot of unknowns with Brock Purdy, even though the 49ers are very confident that they got their guy. We always give you one thing to read, one thing to watch, and one thing you might have missed. One thing to read on this Tuesday, Jennifer Lee Chan wrote up some quotes from Jed York at the owners' meetings last week that I hadn't previously seen. Jed was pretty honest about what he's willing to invest in the team to win games, something that could come in very handy this year, given the team's schedule. One thing to watch, Nick Bosa was recently pulled over for driving with an expired license, and the encounter was captured on police body cam. Now, you could watch that. Or you could watch our own Steph Sanchez doing her Nick Bosa impression of the encounter, which is way, way funnier. You can see it from our handle at GS Podcasts. One thing you may have missed, George Kittle did not like the idea of teams being forced to play a second Thursday night football game this year, and he may not like what could be coming. Roger Goodell is reportedly two ownership votes away from being able to flex games into Thursday night later in the season. Apparently, at the last league meeting, there were 22 owners in favor of the idea, eight opposed, and two teams that abstained. Now, we know the Panthers and the Broncos were the teams that did not take a side, but it is not known where Judd York came down on the issue. 
That's a wrap on today's 49ers and 5. Please rate, review, and follow the Gold Standard Podcast Network. Enjoy your Tuesday, everybody. Stay tuned for the Bully Ball Podcast with Steph Sanchez and Jason Aponte. I'm Rob Statz-Guerrero. We'll talk tomorrow. 